to working with you to get rich with crypto, feeling our pockets with crypto profits. It's Monday. I'm with my good friend Amir Ness, and we are going to be looking at lots and lots of Bitcoin charts. And while we were getting ready, something very exciting happened to the Bitcoin price in the last five minutes. Take the first step towards online privacy. Get NordVPN. Get the Crypto.com Visa card. You can use this wherever Visa is accepted all over the world. Make sure you use my link to get a $25 bonus when you register. Link in the description below. Hey, Amir, thank you so much for making yourself available. Thanks for having me, Rich. Oh, listen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I did, I, you weren't available last week, right? So I did it myself. Yeah. It's much, 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 much more fun with you rather than me just listening to myself, right? We're going to look at Luna. We're going to look at Osmo. We're going to look at Bitcoin. Um, we're going to look at another altcoin that while Bitcoin's been going down, this one's been going up. Which and, one is that? Ah, ah, you have to wait. That one will be at the end. <laughs> and and it's a major altcoin. Mm. Okay. So look, shall we start with the Bitcoin chart? Let's go to, let's start with the weekly chart. So there's lots of lines here that I've drawn. They're not necessarily relevant to the weekly chart, but we have got this underlying resistance or support. Maybe I can move that down a little bit, actually. Just there, because then it touches there, 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 and here, going back to July 2021, and then this upper resistance here. So we're in a symmetrical triangle which just follows the trend and we're in a long-term bullish trend. And what we want and hoping for, and what usually happens with symmetrical triangles is they follow the trends, which means we'll have a breakout to the upside. If I go to the daily chart, there's this resistance zone here that I drew around about $39,000. And I don't know why this is showing percentages today, but never mind. And it's just broken through that this week. And it didn't manage to break through here last week. Well, it touched it, got stopped. What can you see, Amir? What do you want to say? I mean, the channels, like you said, are correct. It's The problem is that, I'll tell you, there, there's two problems. The first one is, okay, we're, we're, you could say we are at support. Um, you could also say we shouldn't even be here because that, that last wick up where we, you know, kind of violently went back, yeah, where we violently went back up above uh, 40 um, was really strong. And for them, for the bears to, to take it down right after it happened or the same day, actually, right. It's, it just doesn't show any follow through. So I think we're, we're seeing a lack of follow through, which is really weak. Um, and then we're, we're holding somewhat on support in a really weak fashion and uh and and that's kind of bearish altogether uh, the the thing that happens is what happened about 15 minutes ago where everything was looking more and more bearish and then you get this wick where it goes up four five hundred six hundred in one wick yep no and this is I think this is what you're talking about because what I was looking at was Coin Trader, which has yeah. a, a delay. This is Trading View, and this is the five minute chart on Trading View. Yeah. And, and this, I think this is what you're talking about here because it went down to $38,398 and then shot up, and now it's about here. Yeah. So we've got, we, there is support. There are buyers coming in around about the 38,300 level. Yeah. And that's, that makes it very difficult to time the market. You, it's impossible. You can't because you can never predict those things. And yet we try. <laughs> um, so it's really tricky to tell. Um, and it's really tricky to you, you're just you're better off being an investor, you know, or, or just hodling or dollar cost average average. Yeah. Or something like, like that. Yeah. yeah. Because right, or, or I don't know, even know if it's going to go short. We're just waiting, you know. I yeah. don't, we're waiting to go short. Or I not. mean, this week is a big week because you, you've got a lot of earnings coming out in the stock market. So 
uh, because there's a high correlation um, to Bitcoin and big tech, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get that. I think that's part of what we're seeing this morning right now. So if um, earnings for big tech are down, will the Bitcoin, what's that? if earnings for big tech are down, will the price for Bitcoin go down? I don't know about the earnings question, because you could say if the earnings are down, um, that will that will relieve the Fed of pressure to raise rates. Uh, if they're up, they'll be more encouraged to raise rates. And then you don't know how Bitcoin will necessarily react. Um, but if it reacts the way the market does, it'll go down. Then again, it's been priced into the market already because everybody's expecting 250 basis point rate hikes. So you're, you're, if, if it is priced into the market, then you shouldn't see much of a reaction. Right. And to end it all, Rich, <laughs> <one knows. laughs> So, okay. So let me see if I got you correctly, right? So to, if I were to sum it all up, the price is either going to go up or it's going to go down. And no one knows. Unless it continues to go sideways. <laughs> okay. Well, there there are a couple of uh, alts that have done, buck the trend somewhat. Okay. And one of them is Terra. Oh, that's Luna. Yeah, Terra Luna, sorry. Um, yeah, Terra hasn't bucked the trend at all. It's it's always $1. <laughs> but it did get listed. It's it's a trading pair, I think, on Binance last week or something. Wait a second. Ablecoin. It's on oh. more, not maybe not Binance, but another large exchange or something. It's on more and more exchanges as a base trading pair. You're talking about UST? Yeah. 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 And then the more UST gets used, then the more Luna gets burnt. Right. And that's a big deal. And that's basically the whole narrative that everybody is talking about and, and looking forward to. There's about a million Luna being burned every day. That's extreme. And, and then if you think about, um, you know, there was a tweet from uh, CZ of Binance. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was very cryptic in his tweet. And it was something like, um, if you want to be safe, you have to get untethered, right? And, uh, you know, Binance is... Uh, the USDT is their trading pair for so many pairs. Yeah. But they've just introduced UST. And for him to come out and tweet that. And also, I do believe he's um, a proponent of, of decentralization, which would lead you to believe that he would actually prefer a decentralized stablecoin. Yeah. So, you know, it's like the growth rate for UST, it's, it's, it's at 20, 18 billion right now. And that's, you know, where considering it's not a major trading pair on any exchange yet, you know, it's, it's not. Um, and so it, it, not, that's not to say that there aren't exchanges that have it as a trading pair. They do. I mean, Binance has BTC UST. But it doesn't denominate UST with the rest of its coins like the way it does USDT. If you started to see Binance do that, I mean, it's it's incredible what could happen. You know, you could start seeing um, major, major increase in UST out there. And, you know, that burns a lot of Luna and the price will, will react to that. Wow. Okay. Now that that would be very very bullish for it. Very bullish. And um, what's the total supply of the um, total? It's seven hundred million, but I think that includes uh, a good portion of non-circulating supply, where like the Luna Foundation holds. Right. Right. And the, okay. And they're burning a million a day. About a million a day. Which in percentage terms isn't isn't great right now, but as it accumulates, as the amount that they burn builds up over time and the supply reduces, it, you know it kind of explains the well, price. What is it? 
it, it, if you think about, I mean, if it's happening every day, that's 50% of the supply in one year. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot. But it, but it won't be that much because the, what will happen is that the price of Luna will keep going up. Right. And it's so they'll have to burn burned. less. Yeah. So they'll, they'll burn, burn less. less. But then on the, up, on the flip side to that is at what rate does UST uh, adoption increase? So those are the two kind of uh, variables in that equation. Mm. If, if Luna price goes up, which it should because of the burning, but the rate of UST adoption is happening much faster, then all of a sudden, you, you understand what I'm saying? You're, yep. you're, you're increasing the burn, basically. And that's the thing is that that's not even including the growth of the ecosystem. You know, like we, we sometimes forget that Luna and UST is not the only trick they have. You know, that's that's just their foundation. They're, they're still an L1 layer with a lot of stuff being built on it. So, you know, we, we look at things like Ethereum and, and Atom and all of these other protocols, which reminds me, there's one other protocol to talk about, but so we look at all of this stuff and we invest based on the growth of the protocol. So Luna has that as well as, you know, the, the most prevalent stable coin outside of USDC and USDT. Okay, very good, very good. And what's the, it looks very promising because there's all the, the staking rewards as well. You know, just by staking Luna on, on Terra Station, I'm getting rewards in other coins, which I'm actually converting to Luna. Yeah. And then staking that, which and I imagine I'm not the only person doing that, because so, then and that takes more lunar out of the out of the market. And what's this other platform protocol? So have you heard of Kadena? KDA? I've seen it on CoinMarketCap. So if you want to take a look at the chart, we can do that. But this is really more about the fundamentals and, and not, you know, charting. OK. Uh, KDA. Okay, this is the chart of KDA. Uh, it reached a high of about $28 in November 2021. First listed at 27 cents in June 2021. So it's not been around for, for such a long time, for a long time. And currently, right. price is about 451 and So the first thing I would say is take a look at um the website yep do you want to do this I, I think this is very valuable for for viewers because it's a it's really something to look at so if you look at the about section first um for the team these guys have a lot of depth on their bench um a couple of guys from jp morgan um one of them was uh part of the SEC, uh, they know what they're doing and they're very well connected. But here's what's special about KDA, which you'll, you'll find out once you start doing some research. So they're, they've got the ability to scale. They've got almost zero gas fees and their security is basically from what they, they're claiming um better than any other blockchain in the world and they so packed right there is their coding language and the reason why it's one of the best coding languages the safest coding language is while you're coding packed will review for bugs so unlike a situation where you have to code something and then you get it audited and see where you made a mistake and then you got to go find that bug. Unlike that, Pact is auditing your code as you're writing it. So a developer who wants to build something will feel much more secure building using Pact. 
And that's a big, big benefit. And so they are far, far behind in terms of development compared to a lot of the blockchains we know and of course Ethereum. But if they can prove that they've solved these three problems, this is what they, you know, in, in blockchain, they call it the trilemma, scalability, gas, and security. So they're saying that they've basically solved that. Now that's a really big deal. And it's a 1 billion market cap right now. Now that's pretty attractive, even though it's you know gone up, to obviously it's come, come back down quite a bit. But when you compare its potential to the fact that it's what ranked in, uh, I think it's, what's its ranking? If you want to check coin market cap, I think it's like 100 or something. I don't use coin market cap anymore because they rigged the results. Coin gecko. Yeah. 109 yeah. to buy market cap, four dollars sixty six. Yeah. So it's even even lower than one billion. It was at one billion because um, I was looking at it when it was five fifty. Right. Um, so if you're looking for long term investment, this isn't investment advice. But if you were looking for something, it would um, it would be a good idea to look at KDA. Um, you know, they, they, it's like everyone knows the team. Um, they've got good depth. They just, it's just a question of can they solve the problem they claim they can solve? And will we see developers flock to the protocol? Very interesting. Okay, so it's worth looking into. And I can get you're saying at the bare minimum, what people should do or could do is just look into it and then decide. Yeah. 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 I mean, at a $1 billion market cap, um, for a, a, a scalable layer one that could potentially compete with Ethereum and the rest of them, I mean, that's a big deal. Yep, yep, thank you. Okay, well, let's have a look at um, Osmo, and we've still got the other altcoin, which I think is, which, which actually has been doing very, very well, even while everything else has been dipping. So why are we looking at Osmo? Well, we're looking at Osmo because... I cover a lot of the Cosmos projects and <laughs> look at it. <laughs> Let me get rid of this arrow. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it's below all the, this is on the daily chart, below all the EMAs. I think there's resistance at about $4. The next lot of resistance because bounced up here, bounced up here. Um, and it doesn't have a lot of history because the listing on coin market cap didn't happen till October 2021, when actually it launched and was trading in June, late June 2021. So it has been as low as a dollar twenty or something. And uh, while it's going down, there's still all this growth and development that's happening on the um, Cosmos ecosystem. There's an airdrop this weekend, which is of I forget. I think um, Jackal Dow. I think it is. They're doing an airdrop on the 30th. There's um, Asset Mantle, their airdrop came through last week. There's another one I found out about. I just got the tokens for Meme, Meme Coin, which is a coin you can build memes from. But nobody knows the team and nobody really knows how secure that one is. So, and, and a lot of people are moving out of the airdrops into Cosmos or Osmo or Juno because those three, and I think possibly also Secret, are the, by staking and holding them, qualify for the most airdrops. So there's not much to look at here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, I think, and it, just, it really does depend upon uh, what Bitcoin does. This is on the weekly chart. Now there yeah. is, there is yeah. a, there is a third inning for Osmo in June, which is when the supply, the new supply will reduce by a third, the new supply that's released. So that could have a bullish effect on price. So down we go it, until about $4, unless Bitcoin starts behaving itself and going the way we want it to go. Or unless yeah. Osmo starts looking the way of this one. Now, I covered this last week, Amir, and it was actually because I'm a, I'm a subscriber to Token Metrics, and they sent out a report about how this was looking very bullish. And this is Monero. And it turned in February here. And it's just been pretty much yeah. 
pretty much be just been going upwards, upwards. It's been affected recently by the price of Bitcoin, I would say. But otherwise, yeah. it's been really, really well compared to Bitcoin. And also here, according yeah. to the RSI, pretty oversold. Um, but it's above the 50-day moving average. Anything you, you can see here or you want to say? Um, no, you know, I mean, from, from, I don't know anything about Monero, but like it's had a big run and, and now it's, it's got a sharp pullback. Um, so that's the support level right there. But like you said, everything kind of revolves around Bitcoin right now. And I don't know the narrative that's going on with the whole privacy coins thing. Right. Well, Monero is a good privacy coin. It's not the, the most private of all the privacy coins, but it's a good privacy coin. I think it's worth holding on to as a hedge. So right. that's, it's the West, best well-known privacy coin. So, um, <clears throat> and Zcoin, right? Or Zcash or something? No, Zcash isn't private. Zcash isn't uh, private. Zcoin is now Firo. And I did an interview with the co-founder of Firo the other day. And uh, that is... Every transaction is private on Firo, and you can give permission for people to see the transaction. With Zcash, every transaction is transparent. You then have to make it, you have an option to make it private. Okay. Now with Monero and Pirate Chain, every transaction is private. There's no option to make it public. So, which is why they're harder to track. But we could have a correction perhaps down to as low as the 50 EMA. I think, yeah. What, what Bitcoin does. Okay, all right. So that is Monero and Osmo and Cadena and Bitcoin. Amir, thank you so much. I shall see you again next week. And for anybody, if you have any comments or questions, let us know in the description below. If there's a coin you'd like us to look at, give us the ticker symbol, and also let us know about Cadena. I didn't know anything about Cadena until Amir told me today. Between now and when I see you next, yeah. please fill in your pockets with crypto profits. This is Crypto Rich and Crypto Amir signing out. All the best. Bye-bye.